Okay. All right. Um, hi, everybody. Uh, today I'm going to be chatting with somebody who I'm fortunate enough to have reached out to me and, and a few others in South Africa uh, to help him bring his vision and mission to South Africa. It's Mr. Michael Bradford, who is an internationally recognized intuitive healer who's traveled the world sharing his gifts and uh, wisdom um, really to support people to, well, he identifies the blocks, but to support them to release the blocks and to reach their full potential. So luckily we've been, well, he's been guided to come to South Africa and expand his work through talks and presentations and training and mentorship pro programs as well. So I'm going to be chatting to him today just a little bit more about the workshops and the training that he has to offer us. So welcome, Michael. Very nice Let's to you. have you. Thank you. Thanks for taking the time. Um, you've, I've heard you've been named the trainer of trainer, trainers of trainers, and healer of healers. So am I accurate? Is it accurate to say that your focus when you come to South Africa, your trip is to, to support those in the profession or commitment to heal um, in South Africa? Well, let me back up a little bit. Um, I never said that I was a healer of healers or a teacher of teachers. It's been told to me many times as I've traveled the world, it's like, Michael, you are. And then they told me what they saw and what they felt. So my mission has been about showing people, teaching people how energy, consciousness, intuition, awareness, they all dovetail. And rather than working through the layers of the onion, whatever the gift is that I've been given or the guides and teachers that work with me, I've been able to develop a way to work directly and go right to the core issue that's blocking a person, the deepest root cause. Yeah. So in other words, if you have a weed in the garden and you cut it off at the top, it doesn't do it. If you cut it off midway, even at the ground, it doesn't do it until you get the deepest tap root. Yes. And once you get the tap root, the weed does not grow back anymore. Now, what's interesting is whether it's cancer, diabetes, allergies, hep C, um, a issue with success, relationships, whatever it is, what I have found out is to energetically track that back. And when you get to the root cause, it shifts everything. And that that shifting can occur in a matter of seconds if the person is ready, open, and willing to do that. Back to you. Yeah, that was one of my questions around the work that you do, the willingness and the openness to get healing. Do you need to have that and an understanding of energy healing for this work to work on you? Absolutely. Uh, can you imagine walking up to someone in the street and say, excuse me, uh, when you were seven, this happened to you, and that's really messing up your life. They're going to punch you in the nose. Yeah. I mean, so the only people that I work with are the people that come to me and ask for my help. Now, there are times when I'm talking to someone or in a group, and their guides, their teachers, their higher self will actually come in and start talking to me and say, this person needs help, and they're ready talk to them right now and then I will do it however it has to be through an invitation and that's a matter of respect honor respect it's about boundaries yes um and the other part of it is I only look when I'm invited unless of course the person's guides teachers or my higher self comes in and says this person needs help right now yes and then I'll help them. But it's always through invitation, and I do my best to only do it in a formal location, such as a private session, Skype, WhatsApp, Shops. video. Shops. Go ahead. Well, look, as, uh, as healers, um, we are all very open to healing, and I find on an, we end up becoming what we uh, need. So most healers have gone through some sort of trauma or dealing with something where there's a maybe a need or a drive to, to learn about, and you end up becoming a healer. 
Um, right. I never thought I was going to be a facilitator of healing. It just happened. Um, but we would definitely be open to that. So would, would one of the groups be to focus on, on the healers in the, in the service industry mainly when you come to South Africa, or is it going to be a wide variety of groups? It's going to be a wide variety. However, let me backtrack because you've just covered a wide area. Okay. okay. Number one, only the wounded healer heals. Someone that's had a, a perfect life, they have trouble relating to other people. Yes. Who are in pain and suffering and facing challenges. Mm. So I want to make it clear, I never went out to be a healer. I never set out to do this work. What I did is I went to every healer, shaman, medicine person, trans channel, you name it, body worker that I could find to heal my own pain. And my pain was emotional. It wasn't mental, it wasn't physical, it wasn't spiritual. I came back to planet Earth to heal my emotional body. So my mental, physical, and spiritual body is pretty advanced. But this lifetime, I'm working through the emotional uh, my emotional issues. Oh, yeah. I am an empath. I've had menstrual cramps. I've gone ahead and gotten drunk from drinking water because the people behind me that were drinking were, uh, you know, intoxicated. Oh, no. So I have to be aware because I am so sensitive. Yes. Okay. So that's number one. Number two, when you talked about the healers, the healers are the people who need it the most. Because if I can help 10 people that are in the world, there, it's not going to go very far. If I help 10 healers to heal, they can help many more people. So if I want to multiply the effect of the healing energy on this planet, my whole focus is on helping the healers, the shamans, the medicine men, the teachers, the therapists, the medical doctors, the chiropractors, all the different health professionals, if I help them to clear their blockages, help them to open their intuition, connect with their higher self and their guidance, yes. it takes all of their work takes a quantum leap forward. Yes. Um, so the other question you asked was, what areas do I work in? So I work in the area of health and healing. I've actually worked in chiropractic clinics, holistic medical centers, etc. And I was quite amazed because the holistic medical doctors told me something that I, I had trouble believing. They said, Michael, your work is more important than our work. And I said, what? I beg your pardon? Yeah. And they said, we do not know what's the medical issue and what's an energetic, spiritual, or karmic issue. So they had me work with their clients first to determine what it was because many times they're treating things medically but it's not a medical issue. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm talking about even cancer, diabetes, allergies, hep C, all these things Absolutely. may not be a medical issue, but it shows up on the physical level. Therefore they treat it medically. Yeah. Do you, I mean, what was the reception? I mean, South Africa and America, it's different, you know, um, why would, I mean, what you've said now is very appealing. You know, if I was a GP, especially the integrative doctors that, that we are getting now and the homeopaths slash GPs that we have, wonderful here in Cape Town. You know, they've never even thought about energy healing. I mean, you're talking about energy healing. Energy medicine is more closer to what they would maybe listen to or hear. Or hear. I'm, I'm hoping that they'll be open to adding this to their their basket to, to, to make it just so much quicker and get to the correct root cause and, 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 and make the difference that they, I think they really want to, but they're struggling because they don't have that understanding of the connection necessarily of the mind body and the emotion body that, that concept. You're talking and my body is just electrified and I'm going to share with you Hippocrates, Hippocrates is the father of modern medicine. He incorporated everything, mental, physical, emotional, and spiritual. Part of the challenge is in traditional medical school. See, in America, you've got the American Holistic Medical Association and the American Medical Association, the, Amer the American Nurses Association and American Holistic Nurses Association. So there's been a split. Now, 
they do not have time in medical school to teach the people about energy or anything else. However, every good doctor, every good chiropractor, every good nurse has a sixth sense about them and they know things. Now the question is, how do they develop that? Wonderful. And I would love- And that's where you I've come worked, in. Yeah, I've worked with medical clinics, I've worked with nurses, I've trained, I've worked with over 20,000 clients. I've seen allergies disappear in seconds, life-threatening allergies. I've seen, I've seen cancer, diabetes, allergies, um, thyroid issues disappear when the energy work was done. In fact, there was a woman I worked with in Dubai who, I, she never said she had a thyroid issue, but apparently for years and years, she had a bad thyroid issue. And she came to my workshop stayed two days in, in, this, in a group, called me up a month, two months later and said, Michael, I went back to my doctors and they said, for the first time in my life, my thyroid's normal. They can't explain it. So she had bad thyroid problems, serious ones. And I also have had people who had hep C and other issues. Go ahead. Was she, did she experience one of your breakthrough experiences or was she just in the room and receiving the energy? No, she, she was in it. I do a number of workshops. Number one is personal breakthrough to total freedom. That's a two day workshop. I do another one on intuition mastery. And I do a third one on uh, the ultimate entrepreneur. So it's always the same work. It's just which way am I focusing the energy? Am I focusing it towards someone, you know, on a general level? Am I doing it for someone strictly with intuition or am I doing it with someone with entrepreneurship and success? Yes, I understand. Okay. So while we're on this, you've mentioned now entrepreneurs, your definition of an entrepreneur turns out is very different to my definition. Um, What's your definition? Well, oh, it's terrible. It is somebody who's willing to take financial risk for gain profit gain okay so that's i know ah! <laughs> that's wikipedia okay. can i give you my definition of Please. an entrepreneur yes a person that cares enough to go off on their own to offer a service so for me an entrepreneur is an extremely courageous person who is self-motivated, creative, and unique and special. They're a person who wants to make a difference and they don't want to get caught. They, they're looking to be independent and creative. Yes. Okay. So I honor entrepreneurs. See, I have no issue here. Some people think here's spirituality and here's business. It's not true. They're together. The ultimate entrepreneur is a spiritual master. Yes. And they serve people and they help people. And they do their best to help people to uh, it mentally, physically, emotionally, spiritually, um, uh, karmically, on all levels. Yeah. Could we relate this to, though, a, a business enterprise with a CEO that is spiritual? So it, it is about bottom line, but the approach to, to making profit and, and well-being is across the board, um, keeping everybody's uh, yeah, well-being at heart, you know? So yeah, it's not just yeah, the, 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 the people this of the is, service. It's also, yeah. and you've got great, you've got wonderful experience in the business world as well. So you can relate to them. Okay. Let, me, let me just, add a couple things. Number one, I have a master's in international management. I run companies, corporations. I've been a lead consultant for the state of Oregon Small Business Development Center. Uh, I've had my own oil drilling and exploration company, book publishing, book distribution company. So I've done a lot with businesses. Yeah. Okay. Um, a business, for, for someone to succeed in business, they have to be able, okay, let me rephrase that. The more clear a person is, 
between self-love, self-respect, being in harmony with the product, the service, their client. So self-image, self-esteem is important. Yeah. Um, there's a lot of important factors. It's about intuition. It's about knowing what to do. A spiritual entrepreneur provides a service that goes way beyond what other people do. In fact, when I'm sitting with people, working with them, they change. So whether or not you're in customer service, you're sell, sell, selling a product, you're doing massage, you're a Reiki teacher, you're um, whatever kind of entrepreneur business you're in, it's a service. Yeah. It's you being out with the people making a difference. You can shift everything. Now, here's something very interesting for me. I was in Australia one time and a man walked up to me, a very psychic person. He said, Michael, when you start looking at a corporation the same way you do as a human being, looking at the person as a system and looking at the company as a system, and you can see a company with the same detail that you can see what's going on in a person, he said, that's going to be a quantum leap for you. And I've started, I've been doing that actually for years now, is walking into a corporation, being able to know what their profit margin should be, what their sales should be, what their percentage effectiveness would be. In fact, uh, I just came back from Alaska where I was working with the group and they were so impressed with the work that I'm now, this is a charity, I'm now on their board of directors, executive director and global ambassador for their organization. So the other thing that I'd like to say is that all of this does not have to take a long time. Mm -hmm. Being able to pinpoint exactly what's going on and be able to say, okay, this is the area over here is fine. This area over here is where the challenge is. Yes. And once you fix that, then there's a quantum leap yes. in the, overall uh, peace, harmony, joy, yeah. effectiveness of the organization. I think um, a lot and of- And the profit margin, I'm sorry. Yeah, and the profit margin, yeah. Um, I think a lot of us are ready more than ever for a quantum leap in whichever area of, in our lives we need. Um, you know, I don't think there's anything, or it's, it can be beneficial to enjoy the journey and not worry too much about the destination because you do learn a lot on a journey. And I've always didn't, don't recommend rushing to the destination because you might lose um, valuable lessons along the way, but there gets to a point where it's time for a new map, a new journey. And, and I think everyone's feeling we've done enough at this level and we need the tools, the um, techniques, or the help and the guidance to get there because everything's moving so fast around us and it's not about keeping up but there's just this this feeling this calling that we deserve to heal quicker and yeah. you know it's this uh, why must yeah. i sit and suffer i'm enough it's it's thank you <laughs> but we want to move on janine i'd like to say this um I do the best I can into helping a person realize and understand why they're in the situation they're in. Okay. Now, for that, I do my best to be filled with compassion and do it as kindly and gently as I can. So it's more for me it's more about helping the person i'm working with be compassionate with themselves understand what happened why it happened why they had the reaction they did because all they wanted to do was survive yes so we as human beings do things consciously or unconsciously and a lot of it we're not even aware of mm. so when i'm working with someone I'm holding the energy, I'm holding the blueprint of their soul. I'm holding the blueprint of their perfection. In other words, when someone comes to see me with a life-threatening illness, I do not see the illness. I do not look for the illness. I don't even use the word of the illness. I hold the intention 
of this person being healthy, whole, and complete, or an organization being extremely um, effective and efficient. Okay. So the, the biggest challenge that I find, and this is with healers, counselors, therapists, especially, but it can also be with entrepreneurs, they want to help everybody else. And the biggest challenge, if I want to help the world, the biggest thing I could do is do more work on myself. Yeah. The clearer I am, the more I can help other people. Yes. And the more I heal myself, the faster my clients get better. And a lot of the healers are carrying pain, are carrying trauma. One of the, like I said, I did not go on this path to become a healer. I want to stop my pain. And I just turned 75 years old. I know I probably don't look it. However, I'm still working with three, four different people right now to constantly help myself yes. to keep moving up and becoming clearer and clearer and clearer. Yes. This is not a journey that stops. No. And one of the things I'm looking at in South Africa is two things. Number one is to put together an apprenticeship program to teach people and another program where we're getting together and we're working to heal each other. Wow. So great. I'm looking to do many, many things. I've, I've talked to some uh, like Montessori schools and other schools Wonderful. to help them, uh, alternative schools. Yeah. And I would love to talk to as many different groups as possible okay. who are interested and willing. Now, I, I want to say a few more things. Number one is I'm not that smart. Okay. I don't consider my, myself that smart. Mm. However, I listen. So I'm sitting with people, I'm talking to people and I listen and my intuition comes in, my guides, my teachers, my higher self, whatever you want to call it. And I get told and shown things to say and do. Okay. And I use that information to help the people. What you've described there, yes, it's intuition, but it is, that's quite a psychic ability that you've described. Again, as healers, not all of us have psychic abilities, but we are intuitive. Does that, is it different for you? Or would that be a block for a healer that doesn't feel that they have psychic abilities? Or is that something you can also teach and, and uh, develop? 100% absolutely positively it can be developed and everyone has it, except most people don't understand why. I'm finishing up a book now on intuition um, that I'm hoping to have out fairly soon. I've got another book, uh, Mastering the Human Experience, Your Soul's Journey on Earth, that's available on Amazon. I'm also bringing some copies with me, okay? for sale. Everyone has these abilities, except they've been trained out of us. Mm -hmm. So in other words, in school, they're teaching you math, science, arithmetic. They don't teach you emotions. Mm -hmm. They don't teach you money. They don't teach you relationships. No. These are things we learn later in life or we never learn. So my focus is in helping people to open up those abilities, to open up those channels where they're connecting and learning how to get in touch with and fine tune their intuition. Okay. Now, there's something called entrainment. Mm -hmm. And let me see if I can explain it to you. Entrainment is if you have four grandfather clocks, you know, with the pendulums go do, 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 do. You got four of them in a house, eventually all four will align and move at the same time. If you have four women on their menstrual cycle living in a home together, eventually their cycles will align and that's called a entrainment. Yeah. Well, when I'm working with a person or working with a group, my energy field is so strong that that, that group 
or the people start seeing what I see. It opens up their channel. It's almost like cleaning that channel and opening that channel for them. And that would, so, be, so, that would be part of the entrepreneur program? Be part of all that, the programs. Well, all of them, all of them, amazing. Yeah. It's very exciting. Very, very exciting. Um, Michael, you spoke about the Montessori schools. Um, so I'm assuming you then work with children? Do, and do children I have work, blocks? I mean, is this past life stuff that you deal with then with them? Okay, uh, let's start before this, okay? There's a couple who want to get pregnant, but they haven't been able to get pregnant. Mm -hmm. I can see what's blocking it. Wow. There are people that have had been pregnant. They can't hold the child. They have miscarriages. Yes. I can help them. People um, that have a child with certain issues, I can help them. It does, whatever you can imagine, I can help the people with now. I'm not talking out of arrogance. Mm -hmm. What I'm saying is when I'm with someone, I sit quietly and I ask, how may I serve this person? And then I'm guided and see things, feel things, sense things to know what to say to that person. I'm also, I also have a way of checking their energy field to see how strong the energy field is. And for some people, their energy is shut down. For other people, they're way too open. And I could teach the people, uh, especially if a person's an empath or a highly sensitive person, I could teach them how to moderate and um, control their yeah. energy field. Manage their energy. Yeah, it's very Manage their energy. That's a much better word. Yeah, well, if you can manage your energy, you also, you can, like you say, the... Um, you can be more present and more of service when, when you're looking after your, your own energy. Field. Absolutely. Absolutely. Okay. Brilliant. Um, the last group of people that you were drawn to, or that you mentioned in your interview with uh, Nicolette on Crystal Soul was the 12 step program. Would that also just include imparting uh, knowledge and skills and getting the, the counselors of those organizations together as well. It's the same they, sort of thing or is it different? Okay, unfortunately, most rehabilitation centers have only a three to 5% success rate, at least in the United States. Okay. So when I'm working with someone, um, I'm looking at energetically what's going on for them. So anytime you have an individual, you also have, especially someone that's dealing with addictions, you almost always have energy attachments to their energy field. Now, if you go through a 12 step program, that's really good. The 12 step programs are excellent programs. Mm -hmm. However, they do not energetically clear these other energies off. Yes. Now the people that are sit there going, you know, I want to stop smoking, but I can't. I want to stop drinking, but I can't. Something won't let me. I want to stop doing drugs, but something keeps pulling me. That's what I'm talking about. These things, yes. see, when someone dies, there's no place to get drugs, alcohol, cigarettes in spirit. Yes. They have to come back to the earth plane. So these people who have died come back and attach themselves to the energy field of someone that has an addiction, this person takes it, whatever it is, the addictive substance, it shows up in their energy field and then these other energies suck on it. Okay, and that's how they get their fix. So what I'm looking at is, number one is to clear off those energies. Once that happens, the person has a much better alignment. They're free in their own energy field. And a better chance of actually Making Absolutely. it out there once they've left the, the institution. Right. Mm -hmm. And the other part of that is that why did they get hooked in the first place? Yes. What was the em emotional need that they had or the trauma that wasn't resolved? Now, um, I can tell you a quick story. Actually, it's in my book. But I worked, someone came to me when I was in England. And they were hooked. The guy was in his early 20s. He was hooked on hard drugs and alcohol. 
And I'll make this story very short. He came to me um, and we had one session and he left and he was clear. He was energetically clear and he stayed a year later, he was still clean and sober. And he came to my house eight o'clock in the morning for a session on hard drugs and drunk. So um, I have worked with people in, in so many different areas. Yes. Um, if anybody wants, they can read my book, Mastering the Human Experience, Your Soul's Journey on Earth. Um, that has a lot of stories in it. Okay. And um, all of my talks that I'll be giving in South Africa, I'll be doing demonstrations on people from the audience. Yes. So uh, I welcome any opportunity and every opportunity to talk to different groups, uh, whether they're medical, uh, holistic, energetic, uh, counseling, therapeutic groups, uh, entrepreneurs, and again, helping those in the helping profession will multiply the effect. Yes, and I feel that that is really your, your vision, and that's how we can support you in your overall personal vision, um, which, which yeah, I, I, I can't express how excited I am that I am going to be one of those involved in, in making an even bigger difference. Um, so, yes, we're all very excited for your arrival, which is in the end of the month, but yeah, November, once you've settled from the jet lag, you can start with your, um, your talks and your workshops. Where can people find out more about your talks and workshops? Is there, you're gonna have I've a got, portal? I've got two Facebook pages. One is my fan page, which is Michael Bradford Global. And I have a regular page, which is Michael Edward Bradford. Okay. And people can contact me at michael at michaelbradford.com. Okay, I'll put that all down at the bottom of this of this video. Wonderful. Okay, I think we. Yes. I just want to thank you, um, and the other people that have made a heart connection and felt the importance of this. Um, I'm just coming back. I just came back actually from Anchorage, Alaska. I was teaching up there and it's interesting because Anchorage is on one level of the planet up on the north end and Cape Town's on the south end and it's it's very very interesting and um, I look forward to coming down I've been told the first thing I have to do is go to Table Mountain yes one of the things there are so many things to do you're gonna to have to stay for a year connect with the energy so again thank you thank you thank you and um, I welcome people to contact me and like I said I, I am putting together an apprenticeship program and I would love to do talks to different organizations um, and I will do everything I can to help as many people as I can so thank you very much it's a pleasure thank you Michael we'll speak thank soon you. okay bye